हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चैनल टेक टॉक्स हियर आई एम कवरिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बायनरी ट्री डेटा स्ट्रक्चर फ्रॉम द बायनरी ट्री डेटा स्ट्रक्चर इन दिस वीडियो सीरीज आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द थ्रेडेड बायनरी ट्री सो बिफोर मूविंग टू द कंटेंट आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल टेक टॉक्स एंड keep the bell ringing now let's start with the introduction to the threaded binary tree the first video of this video series before moving to the threaded binary tree let's think about what is a binary tree so a binary tree name itself suggests that it has at most two children or two child nodes and whenever we want to represent a binary tree we are going to represent in a given manner so this one is your root node and it is having both the child nodes this one is the left child and this one is the right child so now here you can see that few of the fields are null null indicates that it is a if both the left and right pointer of any of the node are null then it is it indicates that they are the leaf nodes so with respect to the leaf nodes here you can see that four times the null is represented and now we have to think about that null pointer into the threaded binary tree so what is threaded binary tree so the link part in the node representation remains null there are two cases where the link part is remains null so for a node which is having only one child so if no child is there either left or right that part is going to become null and the node who is having no child node that is a leaf node so in case of leaf node both the pointers are becoming the null so in this case what we have to do we have to form the threads so this is the situation where if both the pointers are null say a left pointer is null and a right pointer is null for node b as it is a leaf node and the same thing for c node both the left and right child are null it indicates that the null is represented in any of the node it indicates that there is no child is present for that node so what is the threaded binary tree so in the threaded binary tree what we have to do we have to replace all the null values by the threads so threaded binary tree it reuses the empty or a null links or a pointer by making some threads so here for your reference i am providing you the same diagram where a was a root node its left child was b and its right child was c so that the null pointer are replaced with the threads always threads are represented by the dotted arrow and always threads are growing from the lower level to the higher level or from the child node to the parent node so here this is only the representation this is not the full concept of the threaded binary tree that i am going to explain you very soon in this video series so i would like to request you to stay tuned with my channel tech talks now let's see what are the advantages of the threaded binary tree so let's see the first advantage it reutilizes the empty or the null links by making some threads so threads are re reused threads are reusing the null pointer or the empty space though they are holding the null or if they are empty still we are using the memory space for the allocation for the whole node so that memory wastage is reused by the threads in the threaded binary tree is the first advantage second advantage is the threads are very helpful for the traversal of the tree 
because threads helps us to traverse the tree in a linear way and hence the traversal is going to become very fast and with very less efforts so this mainly the threads are helpful for the traversal of the tree with less efforts and the third advantage is as all of us are knowing whenever we want to traverse a binary tree that may be recursive or non recursive we supposed to take the help of stack data structure but this threaded binary tree is going to traverse the tree without help of any extra data structure like stack so this is your third advantage now let's move forward to see the disadvantage of the threaded binary tree so in the disadvantage of the threaded binary tree let's see the first disadvantage is to reuse the empty or null links we have to maintain some extra memory field to indicate that whether whatever we are replacing with null are threads or that the field that the left pointer and right pointer are holding the address of its left child and the right child so these things you will come to know very soon when i'll explain you the structure of the threaded binary tree or the node of threaded binary tree right now just keep in mind that here in threaded binary tree we have to maintain some extra memory whenever we are going to reutilize these empty or null fields and in the same way to perform the insertion and the deletion operation or to write down the algorithm to implement the algorithm for the insertion and deletion operation they are somehow more difficult than that of the regular threaded binary tree as it has to maintain the threads so while performing insertion and deletion operation we supposed to take care of the threads which extra task we have to perform hence they are going to become difficult and the last disadvantage is inclusively that's why to perform to maintain the extra memory they are going to become more difficult to maintain the threads inclusively it is going to become very complicated as far as the implementation of the threaded binary tree is concerned so by considering all these things we will continue with in details of the threaded binary tree its representation its types its structure and the operations how they are going to perform on a threaded binary tree in the next coming videos the next part of this video series is to learn types of threaded binary tree at a glance let's see what is threaded binary tree so whenever you are going to represent a binary tree then there are some null pointers are available into the link part of the node they the null pointers can be of if the node is having only one child node and if both child are absent that is no children node that is a leaf node in both the cases there will be the null pointer and we will make the use of that null pointer for the construction of threaded binary tree so here you can see the example these are the null pointers for the node b and for node c these are the null pointers because here b and c both are the leaf nodes so we will make the use of these null pointers to construct it as a threaded binary tree before that or before going to construction or the operations that can be performed on a binary threaded binary tree let's see what are the types of threaded binary tree so mainly the threaded binary tree is having two types the first one is single threaded binary tree and the second type is fully threaded binary tree or it may have both the threads available so let's start with the first type is nothing but the single threaded binary tree again it is divided into two parts the first one is left threaded binary tree and the second one is right threaded binary tree the name itself suggests that single thread means either only the left thread is present or only the right thread is present so these are two different types of single threaded binary tree depending upon the 
thread which is present in a left pointer or in a right pointer so let's see more details about threaded binary tree what is single threaded binary tree so let's see if it is a left threaded binary tree then what does it mean it means that if some of the node has no left child then the left pointer will point to its in order predecessor because thread will hold the address of its predecessor in order predecessor if it is left it will hold the address of in order predecessor means if the left pointer is null instead of that null pointer we will save the address of we will store the address of in order predecessor at the position of null the second type is right threaded binary tree just opposite to the left threaded binary tree right threaded binary tree if the no right child is present means at right pointer the null value is there and that null value we are going to replace with in order successor see these things you have to keep in mind that if a left pointer is null it will be holding the predecessor in order predecessor's address and if a right pointer is null it will be holding the in order successor's address and if both the cases that is if the successor or the predecessor is not present for any of the nodes see for example if the leftmost child is there for your binary tree and its left child is not present leftmost child node's left pointer is null in this case no predecessor will be available and the same case with the rightmost child of your binary tree and its right pointer is null there in that case then the successor in order successor will not be present if this is the situation then in both the situation what we have to do we will point both that is the left pointer and the right pointer to the header node here i am going to explain you all these things with the help of example so let's see the example of left threaded binary tree here you can see that this is a binary tree and the node the node 12 its left pointer is null as no left child is present and this is the left most child of your tree so that's why in order predecessor is also not present so what it will do it will point to the header node and header will hold the address of its root node the next node is 30 its left pointer is also null instead of null value what we will do we will store the address of in order predecessor which is nothing but 23 see students for the learning of threaded binary tree you must know the concept of first of all binary tree as well as you must be very much clear about the traversal of the binary tree specifically the in order traversal if you are not knowing these two concepts then this will be difficult to understand the threaded binary tree so that's why i'll recommend you to go through the binary tree first of all then its traversal and then you can go forward for the threaded binary tree if you are not knowing the concept of binary tree and its traversal here i am hoping that you are knowing the concept of binary tree as well as its traversal and hence i am moving forward for the next point or the next example of single threaded binary tree is right threaded binary tree just opposite to this here we are taking care of only the right pointer if it is null so in this single threaded binary tree you can see that we are taking care of only the left pointer if it is null we will point it to the in order predecessor and in a right threaded binary tree we will take care of only the right pointer if it is null it will point to the in order successor here you can see that this is the right most item or right most node of your binary tree as it is a right most node there will not be any in order successor so that's why it is pointing to the header node and header node is pointing to the root node so in this way the single threaded binary will look like and now let's go forward for the second main type of threaded binary tree it's a fully threaded binary tree 
just now we have seen the single threaded binary tree where we had taken care of only the left pointer in left threaded binary tree and the right pointer in a right threaded binary tree but here in fully threaded binary tree we will take care of both the pointers so for a node which is having a null field in a left pointer then the left pointer will point to its in order predecessor in the same way if a node is having null field in a right pointer then the right pointer will point to its on a in order successor so both the things we are going to take care of in the fully threaded binary tree and as we are taking care of left pointer as well as a right pointer if they are null that's why the name is given fully threaded binary tree and as i explained previously if no successor or the predecessor is present then it will point to the header node that we have already seen in the previous example so now let's see the example of fully threaded binary tree so what it says the fully threaded binary tree will take care of both the pointers that is a left pointer if it is null it will point to its in order predecessor here you can see that for the node 30 the in order predecessor is 23 so blue pointers are helping you to identify the left pointer they are null and they are pointing to in order predecessor and the red pointers are red or the red threads will help you to identify the in order successor as its right pointer is null and in case of node 12 its left as it is the leftmost node of the binary tree hence its in order predecessor is not present hence it is pointing to the header node and same case with node 89 as it is the rightmost node of your binary tree hence the in order successor is not present and that's why it is pointing to the header node so this is the example of fully threaded binary tree and now if we want to construct this fully threaded binary tree we must have to understand the node structure of threaded binary tree not only the fully but if we want to implement the single thread binary tree that is left thread or a right thread binary tree and if a fully threaded binary tree then what the node structure will be there so that's why let's see the node structure of a threaded binary tree for a binary tree all of us are knowing the node structure where mainly the things are present are nothing but the data field its left pointer and its right pointer the extra thing is added is nothing but a flag variable is of type boolean here as it is a left thread binary tree it will be having the left flag variable and in case of right threaded binary tree along with the left data and the right pointer these three fields are common as far as the binary tree is concerned but the r flag is one extra field is added of type boolean here i am explaining you the importance of this l flag variable in case of left threaded binary tree and r flag variable in case of right threaded binary tree what we have decided that if the left pointer is holding the null value what we will do we will copy the address of in order predecessor in this left pointer so to identify whether this left pointer is holding the address of its left child or the in order predecessor the l flag variable will help us if this l flag variable it is a boolean variable if this l flag variable is one that is true it indicates that the left pointer will hold the thread which will hold the address of in order predecessor and in the same case with the r flag variable that is if it is true it is one it indicates that this right pointer is holding the thread it means that it is holding the address of in order successor as this is the right pointer and in both the cases if l flag and r flag are zero it means that they are false value it indicates that the left pointer is holding the address of left child and r pointer right pointer is holding the address of right child means the threads are not present the child nodes are present 
so in this way we can denote the node structure of single threaded binary tree and now let's see the node structure of fully threaded binary tree along with this left pointer data field and a right pointer two flag variables are there l thread and r thread as we have seen previously l thread will hold the boolean value either true or false in the same case r thread will also hold the boolean value that is true or false let's see the representation in your programming language so i am going to use the structure for the representation of this node these things all of you are knowing that is a left pointer will hold the address of left child or the left thread this right pointer will hold the address of right child or the right thread this data field will hold the information part of your node structure and the main part is l thread and r thread as they are of type boolean <coughs> see i have mentioned <coughs> see i have mentioned the condition over here if this boolean value is true then the left pointer points to in order predecessor means if it is true it will hold the thread and the same case if a right pointer it will hold the address of in order successor it is nothing but a thread again and in opposite case if it is a false it will hold the address of this boolean if both the values are false this left pointer and right pointer will hold the address of left child and right child respectively so other way around just keep in mind that this boolean value will help you to identify what is there in this left pointer as well as in right pointer if thread is true the left thread or r thread right thread these boolean variables are true it will be holding the thread values to in order predecessor and in order successors respectively and if this l thread and r thread values are false it indicates that the left pointer and the right pointer are holding the address of left child and right child respectively so in this way we can represent a node structure in our threaded binary tree now let's see the operations that can be performed on a threaded binary tree here we are focusing on fully threaded binary tree in which there are three variations in ordered threaded binary tree pre ordered threaded binary tree and the post ordered threaded binary tree in which we are focusing only on in order threaded binary tree let's see which operations we can perform on a threaded binary tree so basically the first operation is of the insertion of the elements into a threaded binary tree while inserting the first element you will create a threaded binary tree second operation is nothing but the display or it is also called as traversal of the threaded binary tree and the third operation is nothing but the deletion operation of a threaded binary tree how we can delete the element from a threaded binary tree from which let's focus on the insertion operation of a threaded binary tree so let's start with the insertion operation whenever you are going to perform the insertion operation on a threaded binary tree it is just equivalent to the insertion operation into a binary tree because the threaded binary tree is nothing but the next variation of a binary tree but some things you supposed to take care into the threaded binary tree so here we have to adjust the threads after insertion of each element into the threaded binary tree for better understanding we are considering the binary search tree as a threaded binary tree to perform the insertion operation because here in a binary search tree easily we can take a decision where the new node will get inserted as far as the rules of binary search tree are concerned 
if you are not knowing the concept of binary search tree for your reference i am providing you a link in a description box for the binary search tree now we have seen that there are three types in order threaded binary tree pre ordered threaded binary tree and the post ordered threaded binary tree from which we are focusing on the in order threaded binary tree and while performing insertion operation we supposed to take care of few of the cases so let's see what is the first case the first case is when a new node inserted in a empty threaded binary tree it means that the first node here we are going to insert and this case will help you to create the threaded binary tree now let's consider the second case if a new node which we want to insert that you are going to insert as a left child then what the things we supposed to take care of and the last case is nothing but when you are going to insert a new node as a right child so the first case for the creation of a threaded binary tree if you want to insert a new node as a left child and if you want to insert a new node as a right child so these are the three cases that we are going to consider now from which let's focus on the first case so whenever we want to create a threaded binary tree we supposed to insert a first node first of all before that your tree must be a empty tree so in this case both left and right pointers of a new node will be set to the header and a new node becomes a root node because this is the first node initially when we are going to create a node we are going to initialize that the left pointer and the right pointer to null but as all of you are knowing the threaded binary tree the threaded binary tree is always free of null pointers so that's why that all the null pointers that the left pointer and the right, right pointer both will point to the header node and as this is the first node this is going to become a root node in a programming language we will write down like this root equal to new node new nodes left pointer will point to head header on and the new nodes right pointer will point also point to the header node let's see how diagrammatically it will look like so it will look like this then the next thing what we have to take care of after setting the its left and right pointer to the header node we supposed to take care of thread field as well here you can see these are the threads these are not the links so that's why your thread field is going to become a true as the thread field is the boolean type of variable new nodes left thread is also true and the right thread is also true because in the both left field and right field both are holding the address of thread that's why they both are going to become a true now let's consider the second case when we are going to insert a left child so let's insert the left child after inserting a node at its proper position here in this case it's a left child we have to update a thread as we have seen previously whenever we are going to perform the insertion operation on a thread threaded binary tree it is just same as of the insertion operation of a binary tree or a binary search tree only the difference is that we have to manage the threads so when we are going to insert as a left child what type of care we have to take so newly inserted node is a left it nodes left thread points to the in order predecessor because here we are focusing on in order threaded binary tree so that's why we will take care of in order predecessor and the right thread points to the in order successor respectively these things i am going to explain you diagrammatically also so right now just keep in mind that the threads are going to updated the left thread will hold in order predecessor and right thread will hold the in order successor respectively so let's think about the in order predecessor and in order successor which these are so here we are having a threaded binary tree with us and if i want to insert a new node now let's consider this is the new node 15 where it will get inserted by considering the rules of binary search tree 
it will get inserted as a left child of 18. So here we are focusing on a left child. Let's consider what the changes we have to do over here. So here we are going to insert 15 as a left child. So let's we have what we have to do. We have to consider that after insertion of 15 as a left child of 18, what will be its in order predecessor and what will be its in order successor. So in order predecessor, let's traverse the tree in order. So what will be the in order traversal? 2, 12, then 15 and 18 and then the rest of the elements. So which one is the in order predecessor? It will be 12. From where you will find out the address of 12? That is nothing but the left thread of its parent node that is nothing but 18 and its parent node we are having its address directly so right thread will be a parent node so to update all these things we will write down like this as i explained just now its left the new nodes left pointer will hold the whatever was the content of a left pointer of a parent node is nothing but the address of 12 and the right pointer will hold the address of parent itself so let's do the things remove the left pointer from the parent node and attach it to the 15 and attach the right pointer of 15 that is new node to its parent and let's form the link between parent and child node so before insertion the left pointer of a parent was a thread but after insertion it will be a link pointing to the new node so that's why here we are going to form a link here we are going to what we are going to update the parents left thread is false because previously it was holding the thread that's why it was true but now as 18 is holding its left child so that's why left thread is going to become false and the parents left is nothing but a new node so in this way we are forming a link between the parent node and its child node. So in this way we can insert a left child in a threaded binary tree. Let's forward to the next case is nothing but insertion of a node as a right child. Let's consider the same tree and what the things we have to take care of while insertion of a right child as I have explained previously after insertion of the node at its proper position that is right in this case we have to update the threads let's think about in order predecessor and in order successor of the newly inserted node let's consider the same binary search tree which we have seen in the previous slide or in the previous example and let's insert 20 as a new node into the threaded binary tree by considering the rules of binary search tree 20 will get inserted as a right child of 18 and now what the things or which threads we have to take care of so whenever a, the parent of a new node is its in order predecessor then what we have to do the node which was in order successor of a parent is now the in order successor of a new node to understand this statement let's traverse the tree in in order so in order traversal will be 2 12 18 then 20 so parent is the in order predecessor of a new node and in order successor is nothing but 25 and the address of 25 is already present in the right pointer of a parent node the in order predecessor is a parent node itself in order successor of a new node is the right field of a parent node so in the same way let's update the thing new nodes left pointer is nothing but parent itself and new nodes right pointer will hold the right field of a parent hence let's remove the uh, oh, sorry let's create the thread to the parent node and let's remove the right thread from a parent node and attach it as a right thread of a newly created node now the next step is to form a link between parent node and a new node or a child node for the same what we have to do the right pointer of a parent was a thread previously 
but after insertion it will be a link pointing to the new node hence what we have to do we have to update the right thread as a false because previously it was holding the thread to in order successor but currently it is holding the address of the right child so that's why as the right child address is present our thread is going to become false and now we are going to update the link from a right of a parent to the new node so in this way we have inserted or we have created a link from a parent node to its child node hence we have inserted the node in as a right child now let's focus on the next operation is nothing but the display operation display is nothing but the traversal of the binary tree or a threaded binary tree and let's consider the in order threaded binary tree which we have created previously after insertion of 15 as a left child and 20 as a right child to 18 what we have to do we have to start from a root node after starting from a root node let's check its left thread whether it is having left thread or a left child it is having a left child let's step down to its left child and now we are at 12 for 12 again the same thing left thread or child its child let's step down to the left child let's think again for 2 its left thread is pointing to header so we will stop at this position and we will display this 2 so let's display this 2 after that its right pointer is holding a thread with the thread go forward and after using the thread we will return back to 12 as 12 is the next node we supposed to display display it and let's check for its right pointer it is holding the address of its right child step down to the right child let's check for its left child or a left pointer its address of its left child so step down to the left child for this left child let's check for its pointer left pointer it's a thread so that's why it's turn to display the 15 so that's why display 15 over here let's check for its right pointer it is nothing but the node parent node let's move back to the parent node 18 using thread and display 18 18's right pointer is nothing but the node step down to the node or a right child its left pointer is pointing to the parent node itself so that's why display 20 its right pointer is holding the address of in order successor <coughs> let's move to in order successor using thread it is 25 and display it the right pointer of 25 is its right child step down to right child its left pointer is holding the address of parent ignore it go forward for a right pointer it is holding the thread and it is pointing to the header node so it's time to display 27 and as the right pointer of 27 is header node we have to stop at this position so have you observed the thing while displaying the tree data structure if the threads was not present we have to use the stack data structure with the help of stack only we can return back to the previous level or at the parent level and then and then only we can traverse the binary tree that may be a binary tree that may be the expression tree that may be the binary search tree but here with the threads it was become very easy to traverse the tree in in order traversal as this is in order threaded binary tree we are we have easily traverse the tree in in order so i hope you must have understood all the concepts of a threaded binary tree so thank you friends for listening and watching this video if you like the content and the video please like the video subscribe my channel tech talks and share it with your friends for your reference, I am providing you a subscription link over here along with this, the whole playlist of a threaded binary tree. Thank you. Happy learning. Happy data structuring. Thank you friends.